Hey guys, and welcome to your introductory photography course here at Alversity. And we're going to start out this entire course. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this course. And this is, though, still a basic photography course, so we really want to start at the very beginning. And for me, the very beginning would mean defining what photography means. So how about we first take a look at the word itself? Take a close look. You can see as where I put kind of a space here, there's actually a space here between the two words. And this mostly is because i am got bad handwriting. Um, but if you take a look, you see photo and graphy, two words. And if you're a little bit familiar with English, you've seen this graphy attached to lots of other different words that aren't photo. Uh, but let's take a look at photo. Photo is a Greek word for light. And light not in the sense of heavy or light, but set light in the sense of the sun, like what you see with your eye. And then you've got graphy over here. And graphy sort of means something along the lines of drawing. So when you put those two things together, you come up with drawing with light which I think is a really great way of describing what photography is. Photography really is, in a lot of ways, drawing with light. Now, what would be sort of a more functional working definition of photography? So to answer that, I took a really quick look uh, in Google, kind of hopped around, and I came across a definition in the World English Dictionary. And so it has two pieces. The first piece is the process of recording image, uh, images on sensitized material by the action of light, x-rays, and etc. And it also is the chemical processing of this material to produce a print, a slide, or a cinefilm. So basically they're just saying light or some sort of ray, because you notice they said x-ray as well. Light plus film equals photo or photography. Um, now the other definition is basically the act of doing this. So the art or practice, the occupation of taking photographs or making films. So we're just going to say the act of doing that right there. All right, so that is your definition of photography. How about we go take a look at who are photographers? What are the different styles of photography and who are the people doing photography? So let's start out again. We're going to we're going to take a look here at styles. So styles of photography and these have a lot to do with approach. These not necessarily maybe the look of the photo, but the actual way that the phot photograph is being made. And this is a really important distinction for you young photographers out there to understand the difference between different types of photographers. So we're going to just start out by writing them all out. So we've got art photography, we've got documentary photography, and we have got over here commercial photography. And I'm actually going to put one more group over here and we're going to call that the X group because I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's start with the art photographers. Art photography is basically created with the artist in mind. The photographer is then using art or using photography to express themselves or using it to somehow push the boundaries of vis the visual world that we're experiencing. So art photography is in many ways about the photographer. Then you've got documentary photography and documentary photography and this is according to maybe one of the sort of one of my mentors is about the subject so you'll also hear this, hear this being called reportage um, it has a lot to do with documenting the situation in a sort of as neutral a way as possible and making the story about the doc about the person being documented it's a report it's like the way a reporter would work for a newspaper or a magazine or something like that now you've also got commercial photography. Now commercial photography is sort of, it's definitely a very much a growing piece of the photography world. Um, it has had its heydays and it's had times when it's been, it's always been around. But um, in many ways commercial photography in recent years has also started to blend with these two in ways that it hasn't before. Um, but commercial photography is 
photography that's being done with a certain customer in mind and it's often got some sort of advertising component to it. So the, fo the photos are either being sold to a private person who is buying your time as a photographer, the, maybe you're shooting a wedding or something like that, so they're paying for you to take photos of that particular thing, or they are paying you to make some sort of image or paying for an image that you made in another style um, but using it for advertisement. So that's a very important thing. It has a lot to do with promotion. You can think of commercial photography as being sort of promotional photography maybe. Um, and then we've got this kind of other group over here which I haven't really defined yet and I'm not really going to but the X group is basically people who are using photography to make sort of public record. Um, it's not documentary in the sense it's not really for a magazine or something like that, but maybe police officers or um, salesmen, people like that, who are using photography in their work but not necessarily in these formats over here. So I'm just going to leave that as the X group. I haven't found it anywhere on the internet, so I'm just going to call it, not even give it a name. But I just want to make you all aware that that's out there. Alright, so you can do all of these different styles of photography in a couple of different ways these days. I mean, in the modern world, we have, everybody knows, we have digital photography. So this is the way that most of us are taking photographs these days. But that's actually not that old. I mean, when I was a kid, you didn't have digital cameras. Um, you had film cameras. And so film cameras were how photography was performed for a long time. You also have, and this is kind of comes as a surprise to some people, you also have video. Um, some people are like, wow, video, is that photography? Well, yeah, it's photography. It's just photography that happens to be moving at about 24 pictures per second or so. All right, so how about we go take a look at some different examples of photography. Here we have got Ansel Adams, and Ansel Adams was an American photographer in um, the 19th, or sorry, in the 20th century, and Ansel Adams is sort of your quintessential landscape photographer, and he was shooting that in the style, so like we said before, in the style of an art photographer. Now sometimes Ansel Adams did the occasional commercial piece or thing, something like that, but in general he was a landscape photographer who was an art photographer. So landscape was his specialty, it was the sort of the thing that he liked to photograph, his specialty, but he was an art photographer. This photo right here is actually sort of not too controversial but somewhat controversial because it kind of breaks some of the rules of um, of the documentary um, of the documentary and art photography sort of boundary. It was made by a woman named Dorothea Lang. Dorothea was a photographer, and during the Depression in the United States, it was a time back in the 30s when everyone ran out of money, everyone was very poor, and the government basically went around and hired artists to do projects. Dorothea Lang was sent out with her camera through the United States to take photographs. And this is one of her most famous, probably is the most famous photograph that she ever took, and it's called The Migrant Mother. Now, I'm using this photo as an example of the difference between art photography and documentary photography because you could approach this situation in two different ways if you are Dorothea Lang. You walk up to this woman and you say, uh, ma'am, is it all right if I follow you for a while and take some photographs of you? And then you would proceed to take photographs while this woman was going about her day. And if Dorothea or you as a photographer don't affect this person in any way by trying to make them pose or make them do anything extra for you if you tell them don't tell them to sit and put their hand on their chin and look out across the, the prairie um, then that is a documentary photograph so if you are trying to document things as they are happening without influencing and that's really important or doing the least you can to influence and you can never really truly not influence a situation but you do that then you are basically working as a documentary photographer that can be art photography but you're shooting in the style of documentary now if you were to walk up to this woman here and say I'd like to take some pictures of you and then tell her well I'd like you to put your hand on your chin and look out across the prairie and kids if you could put your head sort of on her shoulder or behind her back 
that'd be great, thanks, and then take some photos. That would then, in that case, no longer be a documentary photograph. That is, well, I guess you could call it art photography. But it's no longer documentary in the sense that we think of it today. Back in the time when Dorothea Lange was working, the rules about this were there, but they weren't necessarily as strict as they are these days. And so, you know, what, whatever, the, whatever ended up happening with this story, whether this is a documentary photograph or an art photograph, in many ways it has become over time, no matter what happened, sort of seen as a documentary photograph because it captures a time and an emotion and a piece of American history in a way that's very unique. But um, it's just one thing to think about as you're approaching these, the difference between documentary and art photography. Now here, right, um, this photo would be a classic example of a uh, documentary that's sort of like an art artistic documentary photo. It's taken by one of really my favorite photographers. I love this guy. His name is Henri Cartier Bresson. He's a French guy who uh, worked as a photojournalist. I think it's, it's one of my favorites. And I spell his name wrong. Um, he's a French photographer who worked for big photo agencies back. Um, he was one of the founders of Magnum, which is a huge photo agency, um, very important in the history of photography. And you can see here that you can shoot in documentary style. So this is a documentary photograph, but that it can still be artistic. That is totally cool. You can be artistic, it doesn't necessarily be an art photograph. So what makes this photo artistic? Well, I really love this photo because you have all these great shapes. You've got this guy, this is a statue, this is a very famous artist apparently at the time. Got this guy's legs, look at his legs, and then look at the artist's legs, and look at his posture same thing. And almost in a way, and I'm not sure if this was necessarily intentional, but I also, looking into it, also see this line here, and this line here, and this line here. And you can see there's just really interesting f shapes going on there. And this is typical Henri Cartier-Bresson. He has better photos. I think this isn't one of his best ones. This is just one that was in the open domain. Um, but you just always are seeing this in his work and a lot of documentary photographers do very artistic work but they're also doing it in a way that they're not telling the guy hey could you go back and walk and do that again and again and again they just catch it the, wa the first time that it happens now we're going to move into commercial photography so this is these two things that you're seeing right here are most certainly or often are commercial. So most of the wedding photography that you see, unless you're shooting it as a photojournalist for a magazine or something like that, if you're being hired by the bride, or most likely by the bride's father, um, you are working as a commercial photography, or commercial photographer, sorry. Whew, lots of saying photography today. All right, so wedding photography is very often commercial. It can be otherwise, but it's generally commercial. Um, Fashion is also a very big piece of commercial photography these days. It's everywhere. It's probably in the Western world one of the types of photography that we see the most. Um, fashion photography can be journalistic if you're being sent by a paper or a magazine to document an event, but very often you're being paid by maybe the maker of this pair of pants or these fancy shoes uh, or these fancy red shoes. Wow, look at those. Um, you might be being paid by the makers of those or some sort of maybe the people who are putting on the show up here or maybe you know this rich guy over here wants some photos um, whatever the case is you're working as a commercial photographer often in these situations and the difference between those is who's paying you essentially all right and when you think about photographers I think a lot of people have lot of different ideas. What is a photographer? And a lot of times you kind of imagine this guy with his massive lens right here. It's just really ridiculous. Um, you kind of imagine these guys. And in a lot of ways, yeah, those people are photographers. But um, there's lots of different ways of being a photographer. It's always been the case. You have guys like this from back in the day who were doing portrait studios. You have people like this right here, who's um, this is a Turkish photog photographer who does a lot of art photography. She's using a medium format camera here. And um, you have everything in between. You have people who, and you also have people who are outside of the professional world who are just working as amateurs.
So there you have it. That was your introduction to the very basics of photography. We're going to move on in the next lesson to the history of photography. Uh, for right now, you can check out more videos at allversity.org.